So we recently did a deep dive on Oath Keepers, essentially going over every exotic bow in the game and how it synergizes with all the changes that hit Oath Keepers at the beginning of Season the Deep. Today, guys, we're going to be diving into No Backup Plans. Now, the reason why we have so much interest in No Backup Plans is due to the fact that they have been, for a very long time, unimpressive. These exotic Titan Goblins began their journey actually all the way back in Year 1 of Destiny 1, offering buffs to melee attack speed, special weapon reload speed, and to the Defender Titan the OG Void Titan ability called Force Barrier. Now, before Destiny 2 gave us universal keywords and subclass verbs, special effects were scattershot. Unique and varied, Force Barrier offered a 75% damage resistance and was triggered by getting kills with the Disintegrate Void Melee ability. In year two though, its special weapon loader perk was replaced with Shotgun Loader. While the specifics of the early Destiny sandbox aren't really interesting, the core concept of no backup plans began here. Melee kills gives damage resistance. The shotgun is always ready. As the name implies, this void focus exotic encourages aggressive up close gameplay. Now fast forward to the D2, after Gaul blew up the tower and we magically lost access to all of our previous exotics, albeit a few, we finally got these exotics back though in Season of the Loss. It's arguably one of the longest seasons we ever had in Destiny, if y'all remember that six month long season leading up to Witch Queen. Now these gauntlets finally made the return though, but something wasn't quite right when we finally finally did get these exotics. No backup plans weren't meta, and nowhere near as meta-defining as they were back in D1, as its reprisal would fall short even of its original form. The updated no backup plans was Force Multiplier. When you have full melee energy, Shotgun Final Blows activate your defensive strike and consume your melee energy, and then Shotgun Final Blows also give you melee energy. Now the core identity of punching and shotgunning was intact, but think about that loop for more than a second and it starts to fall apart. Where the original no backup plan rewarded you for punching and using shotguns, this update essentially removed your melee ability entirely, using the feat only the shotgun side of things. Needless to say, guys, it didn't take another invasion by the Cabal to put these gauntlets to rest the next couple of years. I myself threw these back in the vault to never touch them again. But that brings us to Season the Deep, and specifically, Update 7.1.0. As we covered in several videos, Bungie did a sweeping pass of dozen of exotic weapons and armor pieces. Most of them were tweaks or slight buffs, and maybe the occasional nerf, and one major nerf, that being the Starfire Protocol. By the way, we did a breakdown video pre and post of every change from Season of Defiance to Season of the Deep. Now, across all of these updates, the word rework came up only twice. The first was for Sound Basin's Grip, which we will be doing a deep dive on soon. But the second was no backup plants. When you spend years in a category with Sound Basin's Grip, a heavy weapon that did basically no damage and was less useful than a class ability, you know you're in a tough spot. Now, no backups plan exotic traits had been reimagined. The new force multiplier says, while using a void subclass, rapid shotgun final blows or defeating powerful combatants with a shotgun will grant a void overshield and start health regeneration. Now, while you have a void overshield, shotguns deal additional damage and shotgun final blows refreshes this overshield. It also provides a moderate benefit to shotgun airborne effectiveness and reload speed. Now, out of all the four versions of gear, this is the first to remove the melee aspect in entirely and completely commit here to shotguns, a thematic reversal of its last revision. Despite losing some functionality, I think most will agree that damage buffs are always welcome. And keying into the void overshield keyword offers a lot of versatility that it simply never had before. But how is its performance? The benchmark of good and a balanced exotic armor in Destiny is an effect that either enhances a particular style of play without making it dominant or that enhances several styles of play by marginal amounts. Starfire's protocol extreme nerf was expected because it undeniably created a singular dominant play style for Warlocks. Heart of Emma's Light for Titans similarly enhanced every subclass to a point where it really just pushed every other exotic out of the way. Now, No Backup Plans has two key limitations to prevent a sweeping issue like Heart of Emma's Light. Its benefits are only active on a single subclass and only applies to shotguns, which really puts it in a very niche department. And it's okay to be that way. It's okay to be very specific with what you are good at as long as you're damn good at it. And I'm here to tell you guys, no backup plans definitely is good at making shotguns nasty. Now, almost every aspect of Force Multiplier's description undersells how generous 
and how powerful each effect actually is. The damage increase is a whopping 35% in PvE and a 10% buff inside of PvP. Now, if you look closely at the armor tuning article that announced this rework, many exotics had damage buffs adjusted to what Bungie called a tier 4 non-stacking damage bonus. And the intention here was to make sure surge mods or other damage increases could not interact with those exotics. Now, one of the exotics they did not mention in such a way was no backup plants. And that's because that 35% damage buff stacks with weapon surge mods. Now, for clarity, one surge mod grants 10% extra damage, two surge mods is 17%, and three being 22%. Now, combined here, shotgun damage can actually be increased by around 65%. That number climbs when you apply things like activity surges or overcharge, which is present in even activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls, which, by the way, launches next week. Now, this damage buff does not appear to stack with the effects from other subclass abilities, such as Radiance or Weather Radiance, as no backup plan simply overrides those buffs due to its higher values. But surges, they still stack here. Now, this fourth iteration of no backup plans already takes the crown for the deadliest of the bunch. But before getting too excited, remember that this damage is contingent upon having that void overshield. Focusing solely on the means of getting one granted by the exotic itself, rabbit shotgun kills or powerful combatant shotgun kills will grant this shield. Now, given the limited ammo reserves of most shotguns and the high cost to kill tangy targets, at a glance, this does seem like a high bar to clear. Luckily, though, it's not. Only two back-to-back -back kills on a red bar enemy are needed to trigger the effect. Powerful enemies don't need to be that powerful. In testing, we kill the first orange bar at the entrance of a lost sector, and boom, you get an overshield. Matter of fact, if their health bar is anything but red, you've got yourself a buff. And if that overshield timer is ticking down to zero, a single kill replenishes that shield fully and returns its timer to maximum. Not only that, guys, seasons ago, we actually got a buff to overshields inside of PvE. They're better. And a thousand percent worth using. Now to cap it all off, the airborne effectiveness and reload speed buffs are always active while backup plans are equipped. So even if you're not pumping out extra damage, you're still getting that improved performance at baseline, which makes it easier to get one or two kills to then get that overshield and then begin that addictive loop of staying tough and putting out incredible burst damage. Now those buffs are no slouch either. Our testing reveals roughly a flat 30% reload speed increases across all frames, enough to shave one to two whole seconds off a full mag before even applying loader mods. Now, airborne effectiveness is harder to nail down here. ABI source says that it's a plus 30 to AE, which is something that you can appreciate, especially inside of PvP. Regardless, though, these are free stats. Free, just by simply having this exotic on. Now, while our deep dives like to spotlight the best specific use cases of our subjects, no backup plans, glow up, has been so potent, so beautiful, so nasty, that it is frankly hard to think of an area in the game where this is not a deadly and fun exotic to use which takes us to our build-in synergies. When examining backup plants and its best use cases, we need to start with some of the basics. You need two things, a void overshield and a good shotgun. Like before we even start diving into the season, the deep artifacts, just simply getting and maintaining an overshield is not difficult. Titans, we already know what Bastion does is an aspect that grants them an overshield on popping a barricade. You also have the shield bash melee, which can grant overkills, echo vigilance, which grants shields on kills while wounded, offensive bork, which kind of feels like a spiritual successor to the original dome backup plans from destiny one improving melee performance and extending an active overshields duration you can also focus your armor on high resilience and maybe even strength here to keep these ability cooldowns quick and equip mods like utility kickstart and distribution to make them even quicker and fill in the rest based on whatever element of the shotgun you end up using now currently this season we have an artifact perk which grants void overshields when picking up a void breach this guys is so free echo of harvest domineering and cessation all generate breaches for killing void debuff targets, allowing room for even more subclass synergy. Or just throw on the perk onto the breach, which drops a breach for killing any debuff targets while running a void subclass. Supernova gives outgoing void a weakening effect after picking up a breach, and the cycle continues. Protective breach opens up so much flexibility to keep abilities and overshields almost up constantly in PvE during the season. Now that we have overshields out of the way, let's talk about a a good shotgun. Unlike other archetypes, it's hard to evaluate shotties by a singular category of damage like max DPS or even precision damage. All legendary shotguns shoot 12 pellets at once in a unique spread, except of course pinpoint slugs. And the per bullet damage falls within a pretty small range. At Carl, aggressives have the highest damage per pellet and rapid fires have the lowest. But when calculating DPS, aggressives fall to the bottom of the pack with our rabbits rising to the top. Now to avoid turning this video into a shotgun archetype breakdown, I'll keep my 
my advice here is simple. Decide whether you plan to mow down weak enemies, burn down tough enemies, or head into PvP and pick the one that feels the best. Lightweights and aggressors are fun and add dense moats. If you're precise, rock slugs. Precisions, in my opinion, are actually the best shotguns inside of PvP. And rabbits, well, they're just fun to use if you like blowing your load. Where no backups really starts to shine, though, is when pairing it with an exotic shotgun. And that roster is currently jacked. You've got Chaperone, Conditional Finality, Duality, Lord of Wolves, Legend of Acris, the Fourth Horseman, and even Tractor Cannon. Now, I don't want to turn this into a shotgun breakdown video. Instead, though, I want to highlight some of these exotics, though, that are really pumping out some crazy damage. First up, we have Conditional Finality, one of the best exotic shotguns, especially when dealing with champions. The ignitions, the stasis freeze, the shatter damage, it was already a good shotgun, but then adding up to 60% damage turns it up to a whole nother level inside of PvE. Now, Chaperone and Duality are also some very popular shotguns inside of PvP. Now, granted, even after this change, they still aren't DPS kinks. The damage boost does feel nice though, and we are going to talk about those shotguns here in just a moment. Now, the sleepers for this season are actually Legend of Acrius and the Fourth Horseman, and they have been making waves for their high DPS. And we've showcased Fourth Horseman and the type of damage that weapon can put out. It's crazy. Combine that with the benefits of no backup plans, things get nutty. Now, Tractor Scanning damage isn't stellar, but its massive 30% damage debuff coupled with the minimum 35% damage buff here allows for some truly deadly combinations against bosses and taking enemies. Now, you've got your shield and you got your shotgun, but we're not done. Non-shotgun weapons play some fascinating roles here. The Excalibur grants void overshields while guarding, allowing even more flexibility over how and when you trigger no backup plans. Now, if you don't want to run two special weapons, a fire team member with Vex Calibur can actually do it for you. You can also have someone on your team rocking Collective Obligation with its Void debuffs, which is easy mode for creating Void Breaches. Now, without Protective Breach, it becomes less valuable, but keeping Void keywords in rotation will help with kills and ability uptime. Now, zooming out from Exotics, we have things like Repulsor Brace. This legend trait grants a Void Overshield for killing a Void debuff target, which is wonderful here for topping your Overshield back off. You can even pick up the Reprise Age of Bond, which we're going to be re-reviewing here soon, which can roll with things like Repulsor Brace and actually destabilizing rounds together. We have a number of Void weapons, guys, that can really dip into synergy here. But this takes us now to the best use cases. In PvE, there is an overwhelming amount of build opportunities and effect interactions that give no backup plans a very broad set of effective uses. As a single example, the most recent dungeon goes to the deep as some of the highest health bosses in the game, with our mid boss here being a short range, close quarter combat encounter, which is why you've been seeing people using things like Acris. And guys, it has been pumping out some crazy damage. This is actually one of the builds we want to share with you guys. And we're going to be doing a video of this. And big shout out to Cobra for sharing this build. There's so many things here that allows you to utilize Acris to the fullest, but at the same time, still synergize Void back into our artifact mods and keeping those overshields topped off. This has been one of my favorite builds here, but it gets even better. Another build Cobra made for us revolves around conditional finality. I know Acris is getting a lot of attention here, and this is not necessarily supposed to be a build video, but we're just too excited about these builds that I just got a share of both of these. And this is not something that's just going to be useful in one or two situations. Literally next week in Grandmaster Nightfalls, I am going to be running this. And I know a lot of people think you're crazy to rock a shotgun in in-game PvE, but when you're pumping out this level of damage, when you have this much utility and counter against champions, why not? Now, outside of PvP, does this make a big difference overall in the shotgun meta? Well, I feel like a lot of Titans that are playing with Bastion and that aspect are really prioritizing popping an overshield before every engagement. However, if you're trying to actually proc force multipliers overshield on kill, that's going to require two rapid guardian kills, which is just not going to happen often, which is why a lot of people are going to be just preemptively popping their barricades, granting themselves an overshield, and walking flat-footed in there with a 10% buff to their shotguns. And although this doesn't really move the needle in terms of kill range, it does add a little bit more forgiveness. And for the sake of something like duality that can go kind of back and forth here between being both a slug and a regular shotgun, depending on whether you're aiming out sights or shooting from the hip, this kind of forgiveness is very much appreciated. Overall, I do like it inside of PvP, but I think inside of PvE is where you're going to see no backup plans really thrive. The applications here, guys, are undeniably wide. Ad clearing, survivability, boss DPS, bumps there in PvP lethality. You also get the flat buffs there, the reload speed, and AE, these are major changes, guys, to this exotic. And even though it does kind of put you in a box to use only a shotgun, I love that it's taken shotgun builds and turned them up to 11, something that we just never used inside of PvE. 
And what's so beautiful about all this is none of this feels finicky or difficult to proc or use. I'm not jumping through hoops. I'm literally just running around, aping things inside of PvE and clearing out the house. Granted, when dealing with bosses, you are going to have to think about how you approach that boss, but you can still execute it. And you're seeing people execute that already in the new dungeon. In my opinion, guys, no backup plans is a rock solid performer in both mid and high level activities with good uses for neutral gameplay and fine tuned DPS strats. I know this deep dive today ran a lot longer than our other ones, but there was a lot to say about this exotic. We did a breakdown of Oath Keepers here recently. And we were bummed out how Oath Keepers really missed the mark in synergizing with so many of our exotic bows. But I'm pleased to say here that the synergy with no backup plants and all of our shotguns works. And it is a beautiful sight to behold. So guys, get in on that 35% stacking damage buff and feel free to rock those two builds that we put in today's video. But fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.